Hey guys, well it's great to be in your home. It's kind of, again, weird to be here in the auditorium alone with just a selected few from the worship team. And uh, so instead of welcoming you, I guess I'm welcoming myself <laughs> in your house, in your living room, or maybe your bedroom. That sounds a little weird, right? Uh, but uh, hopefully that uh, uh, so far when it came to the worship, it really was inspirational for you. And uh, as we do church together, I believe that um, we, we place ourselves in the place where God can move. But in reality, we're missing you big time. Wow. I miss your, uh, your eyes. I miss uh, having you here. And uh, I believe that when we're going to get back together, we'll have a big powwow, right? We'll have a blast. It's just going to be amazing. Amazing. I'm looking forward for that. But meanwhile, we got to do this this way. And... Uh, and what we want is to grow in the ways of the Lord. We want to take a hold of what He's up to because God is on the move, right? God is working upon our, our earth, upon our communities, upon our homes, and we want to see His will just flourish. And before we go to His Word, can we pray? Can I lead you in a prayer in your, own, in your homes? Father, we thank You for uh, Your presence we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you that we're not alone. We thank you that uh, you will never forsake us. You will never abandon us, but you will always be in our midst. We thank you for that, Father. So we turn to you. We ask uh, your blessings. We ask your leading. And I pray, Father, that uh, we would hear what you want to say. And I know that you can go beyond my words and that you can speak to hearts. And that's what I pray for for the work of the Holy Spirit to reveal the thoughts of Christ and the will of the Father. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Um, I read this quote uh, this week or last week, and uh, it really got my attention. It's, uh, it's from A.W. Tozer. He says, A scared world needs a fearless church. I really like that quote. A scared world needs a fearless church. And I think it's so true that it's now the time for the church to arise and to respond to its call. And when you look at this man, A.W. Tozer, he was born in 1897, and he passed away in 1963. And he saw a lot of different things. He saw the Spanish flu. He saw the two wars. He saw also um, uh, the, uh, the Asian uh, flu also. And, and so he saw a few pandemics and so when he writes this, when he wrote this, I think there's a lot of weight. Uh, I, I really believe that we can get something out of this where the, 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 the world is scared and, and we can witness that, that people are freaking out. But the church should be different than the world, right? When I'm talking about being uh, fearless, I'm not talking here about being stupid, okay? We're called to follow the recommendations of, uh, of, of our land, and, and the reason why they're there is for safety measures. So I'm not talking here about being stupid. I'm talking about having a heart that is not uh, taken by fear, and to live a life not controlled by fear. And it's so easy for us to get caught by fear because there's so many things around us, there's so many voices that are telling us this and that, and we'll focus about that on that for uh, a little later on. But one of the things that I really want to uh, express to you or what we should uh, see or what we should aim for, it's to be like Joshua when he was in front of the promised land, right? Where Joshua was encouraged by God to be strong and courageous. And, and, and I believe that's the call that, we, uh, that is upon the church, to be, uh, to be strong and courageous. And, and we don't know what the future has in the whole or what the future has for us. And actually, I would have to rephrase this. I don't know exactly what God had has in store, but we know that he is in our tomorrow, and we know that he's in our future. And so what we want to do is we want to, um, we want to um, uh, respond to his call. And, and, and the main thought is that we're called to be different than the world. Can you tell that to someone around you, that we're called to be different from the world? And uh, so that shows by what I'm posting on, on, on social media, what comes out of my mouth, what's my attitude. We, we should not be like the world. Because I believe that we, we have a hope and we should not be controlled by fear. And so when it comes to living a life of not being controlled by fear or, or being a fearless church, what does it mean? How does that look? If you have your notes, uh, we've sent you the notes via email and it's available for you. And, and like, what does it mean for us not to walk in fear? And how do we walk in, in faith instead of fear? Well, I, I think the first thing we need to, we need to do is to define our focus. 
What am I focused on? What's the focus? And I, I really believe that my focus is important because if wherever I focus, I will go that route. Does that make sense? If, if you're biking or cycling and you're not looking ahead and you're looking on the side and you're not focusing on where you're going, there's a, you're placing yourself not in a good spot, right? Or we can all have a picture, a mental picture of a kid that is running and he's not looking and, you're, and you want to tell the kid, come on, look ahead, <laughs> look ahead. And sometimes what happens, they hit a wall, right? It's funny and not, but the thought is, hey, you got to look ahead. And uh, so my focus sets my destination, my focus, listen to this, this is huge. My focus sets my destination. Whatever I focus on, I will go in that direction. And there's this verse, two verses, found in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25. Look what it says. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. So you fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the path for your feet. And be steadfast in all your ways, or be steady in all your ways. So here we see that we're called to look straight ahead and fix the gaze, our gaze, directly before us. I remember when I was a, a, a kid, or younger, way younger, and uh, my dad was a, a lumberjack. And one of the things he used to do, and what he learned, was to walk with a chainsaw in one hand, and a jerry can, a five-gallon, uh, on, on the other hand, and he walk, would walk on a, on a, on a railroad track. And he would walk miles on that track. And I remember him teaching me how to walk on the track. You know when you walk on the track, you, you, you're afraid of losing your balance. And you probably did that at one point in life where you walked on the track. If you have it, well, come on. It's time to experience life. Okay? Uh, so if you walk on that track, if, if you look on the side, you'll take a flip. And if you look at your feet, you focus on your feet, Again, you'll, you'll be, you'll be uh, going on one side or the other. What you have to do is you have to look around a meter in front of you or half a meter in front of you, of you and you got you to gotta let your feet go. And it's amazing. You can go for uh, kilometers this way. And that's how my dad used to walk kilometers. And in his ways, he would say miles, right? So he would walk, he would walk miles with a, a chainsaw and his, his canteen on the other side and, and do a, a long trip. And it's the same thing with us, I believe that we are called to look ahead. If I, if I get distracted on the right and on the left and I remove my focus from what is before me and my focus is to pursue God, and if I take my eyes off God, what's going to happen is that I will fall on the right and on the left and I will lose the peace that God has for me. So, uh, I, so what we want to do is we, we want to we look ahead, we want to look to God, and we got to realize that my focus will influence my destination. I like what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Actually, it's my verse for, the, for this season. And uh, you, can, uh, un, uh, you can underline it, underline it, underline it in your Bible. Uh, you can put it on your fridge. I think it's an awesome text. It's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. It says, He has delivered us from, from such a deadly peril, and He will deliver us again. On Him we have set our hope that He will continue to de deliver us. So Paul is saying here, he has delivered us from such a deadly peril. He will deliver us again. On him, you see, on him, we set our hope. We put our eyes on him. We set our uh, focus on him. And then he, it says, and he will continue to deliver us. And if you look in the same book in chapter 11, verse 24, we, we, we see his journey where five times he received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times he was beaten with rod, once he was pelted with stones, and three times shipwrecked, and the list goes on. It was not a walk in the park. It was not a walk in the park for him. But what he says is this. Um, he has delivered us, he will deliver us, and he will continue to deliver us. Can you tell that to someone beside you? He has delivered us, he will deliver us, and he will continue to deliver us. What a mindset, right? And I think that's how we should live our lives. We should live our lives by this example, remembering what God has done, knowing that He's with us, but also knowing that He's in our future. So He has delivered us, He will deliver us, and He will continue to deliver us. I think that's so phenomenal as a verse. And, uh, and Paul, when he said this, he, he was talking about his journey. Like I said, it was, it was a hard journey, but he knew that God was with him. So in this time where we're called to shine, 
in a, in a scared world, we're, we're called to rely and, and trust in the Lord and keep our eyes on Him. And Psalm 16, verse 8, is a text that is similar to that. It's a great verse that we can memorize. It says, I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken. Wow. I will not be shaken, for He's right beside me. So I know the Lord is always with me, always with me, and I will not be shaken, for He is right beside me. He's not distant. He's not far away. He's right beside me. So I'm not called to be shaken, and I need to know that He's always with me. So when it comes to doing life, when it comes to be a church that is fearless, the only way I can be fearless is when I keep my eyes on Him. Does that make sense? I've got to keep my eyes on Him. I've got to focus on Him. I've got to go to His Word. I've got to know what He's saying. And I've got, to not, I've got to realize that who He is and what He says, it's not like what whoever is in this world. And His Word is not comparable to what others are saying. I've got to go to His Word. And I think that's so important. We've got to remember who He is. And I like what it said in Psalm 77, verse 11. He says, but then I recall all what you have done. Recall. And sometimes we got to stop, right? we got to stop in our tracks and recall what he has done. But then I recall all you have done, O Lord. I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. They're constantly in my thoughts. Wow. They're constantly in my thoughts. What are in his thoughts? is the work of the Lord, the wonderful deeds of long ago. They are constantly in my thoughts. You see, what needs to be in our thoughts is what God has done. And then he goes a little further. He says, I cannot stop. I like this. I cannot stop thinking about your mighty works, O God. Your ways are holy. Your ways are different. Your ways are above my ways. Is there any God as mighty as you? We know that there's no one, right? You are the God of great wonders. You demonstrate your awesome power among the nations. By your strong arm, you redeem your people. What an awesome text, right? That we are called to recall what the Lord has done. And we're called to remember his wonderful deeds constantly in our thoughts. And, and I, it would be so awesome if we could take a hold of this truth. I cannot stop thinking about your mighty works. I cannot stop thinking about your mighty works. And sometimes you got to realign your, your thoughts because there's so many things coming your way. So you want to think about what God has done. You want to think about what God can do. You want to think about his faithfulness. And that, I believe, when we take a hold of this truth, it arises in us. It influences the way we live our lives. So I believe that what I focus on will, will influence my destination. It will make me go in a certain direction. So it's important to say to look at what am I focusing on? What am I majoring on? What do I talk the most about? What's my focus? And it has to be on Jesus. It has to be on God. Secondly, how do I stay fearless and how can I be a fearless church is when I, lick, when I limit my intake of news. Kind of a funny point, right? When I limit my intake of news. If we, uh, if we want to be fearless, I can't listen to everything that is out there. And that's the thing. We have access to all the information. We, we have access of different conspiracy. We have access to this news channel, this news channel. There's so much things that is said to us. You can go on your computer and you can scare the heck out of yourself. You really can. You, you can be caught with a panic inside of you by what you're reading by this guy, by that guy, or by this movement or that movement. And it's important for us not to get caught by that. This is why we got to focus on the Lord. But we got to go and, and hear what God has to say. Otherwise, we will lose our peace and we will, lose, and we will be de derailed and we'll miss out of, on what God has in store for us. And Psalm 112 says this in verse 6. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. Look what it says in verse 7. They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. They will, they will have no fear of bad news. Why will they not be uh, uh, influenced by the bad news? It's because their heart are steadfast and trusting in the Lord. And so, so when I focus on news and I give myself to that, it's going to bring a, a sense of worry. And it's so important not to do that. I've got to look at the feeding ground. What is my feeding ground? 
like I said, there's so many different voices. Uh, in, in the last three weeks, I've heard some people talk about doomsday prediction, at the end of the free world. I've also heard that uh, we'll never be able to meet again. I've heard that too. And uh, we'll never be able to do church again the way we do it. Um, I, I believe this too will pass. I believe that God has a plan, and I believe that through this, God is working beyond what we see. But we don't want to be caught by all kind of different things that are being said or different voices that are being heard. And it's funny that in this season, there's more and more voices. It seems like people, uh, they want to influence others. And I, and I get that, but it, it's dangerous for us to be caught to the right and to the left. Mm. Like the reality is that we live in a broken world. We live in a, in, in, a, in a broken world. When Adam and Eve fell in sin, they opened the door to sin. And since that day, we, we, we live the consequ- with the consequences of disobedience. For example, I'm dealing with the greatest sickness ever, and that's called aging. And I can't do nothing about it. It's, it's in my life, and that's a consequence to sin. So we live in a broken world we got to be careful when we say God is judging or, or like even receiving some message. You should preach on, on people to repent and all this. Yeah, we call, we're called to repent for sure all the time. We should not just preach it in the season. We should preach it in all season. But it's, 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 it's dangerous to be caught by a different stream and different influence and, and, and lose the focus of why we're here and lose the focus of Jesus. Like I said, this too will pass. Like I said, we live in a broken world. If you look at the year 2000, it was the Y2K. I remember when Y2K hit. I, uh, it was so strong. People were stocking up like crazy. And I remember at one point, I had stocked up, and the day was getting closer in December, and I was a little freaking out because of the people around me were stocking like crazy. And do you know what I did? I went to buy a generator and some jerry can, and I had a ton of them in my garage. And I didn't use my generator just in case. Well, I didn't want it, I didn't want it but I bought it just in case. So, so uh, on the 5th of January or so, I brought it back to the store. But I, it really, it really um, grasped my heart. Like I was caught with fear. I was caught with fear. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to live this way. In year 2000, Y2K, 2001, it was Entrac. Um, 02 was the West Nile vi- virus. In 03 was SARS, 05 was the bird flu, in 08 was the bad economy, and after that was 9-11 and ISIS, and in 09 the swine flu, H1N1, and that was pretty nasty. Ebola virus, Zika virus in, in 16, 2020 coronavirus. If you look at the HIV a few decades ago, that was nasty too. You look at the Asian flu, H2N2 in the 50s. You look at the Spanish flu in 1918. It's unreal. And we, all, we always bounce back. The, these are the consequences to, to sin. And we're going to face these days. We shouldn't be surprised that these things happen because we live in a broken world. You see? What we are called to be, we are called to be a people of hope. We're called to reach out. We're called to love. We're called to rely on the Lord. So I just want to encourage you not to get caught by this, by what's on the left and what's on the right, and focus on the Lord. What I'm encouraging you, encouraging you to, to do, it's to take time to fuel yourself, to fuel yourself, to breathe first, experience His presence, experience God, and let Him lead you from there. It's like when you go and when you hop on the plane, and they say, if we experience a change of altitude, an oxygen mask will fall before you. But place it on your face first before helping someone else, right? So, so it's the same thing here. There's a change of altitude, and we are aware of it. It's not like it was a month ago. And we are in a situation that we don't know exactly how it's going to turn out. But what you want to do before you help someone else, you got to breathe. (sighs) Right? And you take in God. You come to God. You don't want to be like a chicken that has no head, that runs everywhere. Right? You just go crazy. You go on this news, that news. Ah, you freak out. And anxiety comes up. And then you say things that you should not say, and you lose the focus, and actually you get caught in the trap of the enemy. So what you want to do is that you want to breathe in his presence. You want to come before God and say, God, what are you up to? What do you want to do in my life? What are you saying in this season? You take the time to rest, to soak in him, 
And then you are, as you are getting soaked in him, you absorb his presence. His presence takes control. Take, control of your thought, your heart, the peace comes in, and then you go to his word, and you have this dialogue, dialogue with God, with his word, and then God sows life into you, and then you turn around, and you help other people. We, and, and that's what God wants us to do. God wants us to take in his presence, to go before him, and that's my challenge that I have for you. Instead of being caught by all of these different streams and these different voices, and you know that I don't preach like this very often. But I, I, I'm kind of concerned and I'm, I'm kind of mad at the same time because I see so many of you being caught by fear. And what we need to do is we got to refocus on God and let him feel us, receive what he has to say to us. I think that's so important. Whatever we're going, whatever we're, wherever we are in life, I think we always have to do that, but especially in this time. So what we want to do is we want to take in his presence. We want to breathe him, breathe him in. You know, when, when it comes to the Lord, um, sometimes the Lord calms the storm. He's able to calm any storm. And sometimes he calms us in the storm, right? Sometimes God doesn't remove the storm, but he calms us inside. And sometimes he removes the storm. But one of the things that we learn from this thought is that he's always there. He's always in our boat. So what we want to do when it comes to what we're living and what we're dealing is that we want to limit our intake of what's happening around us. We want to take a time with God. And you know what happens is that we watch all the news. We hear this and that. We listen to this, this post, podcast and that or, or this guy and that guy. And we don't even take a time with God. That's crazy, right? We don't even take a time to hear what he has to say. We don't even take a time to, to, to let him feel us and move upon us. And I think that is so important for us to do. So I, I challenge you to limit your intake of what's out there and take some time with the Lord. Thirdly, so if I want to live fearlessly and, and, as a church, because I'm the church and you're the church, it's when I see fear and anxiety as my enemy. I think this is huge. If you can't just get this, I did my job. When you see fear and anxiety as your enemy. Fearing and anxiety is an enemy, and you got to see it. That if you let it in, it's going to control you. It will influence the way you think, the way you live, the way you behave. So when fear comes your way, like there's, there's a common sense, right? Fear of like uh, going and, and crossing uh, the street, like if I would go on the highway and close my eyes and go in, and, and that's stupid, right? And there should be a, there should be a, a sense of fear. Uh, there's a good fear, right, with that, that is linked with a common sense. But there's also a bad fear when it grips your heart. When your heart is gripped by fear, I've got to let you know that it's not from God. Because God doesn't use fear. It's not, it's not in his repertoire. Like love banishes fear. God doesn't want us to walk in fear. Yeah, there's the fear of the Lord where you honor him and you respect him, where you acknowledge who he is absolutely, and we got to walk with the fear of the Lord. But you don't want to walk in fear. You don't want to be controlled by anxiety or by fear because that's not how God wants you to walk. You know, fear causes us to step down. Have you ever experienced that? I know for myself. When I'm gripped by fear, it wants me... It, it, tries to set me up or tries to make me step down. I can't do it. Or it's too big for me. Or I can't handle it. And that's what the enemy wants. He wants to paralyze us with fear. Because we live in a season that we're called to shine and walk in faith and rely on him more than ever. And how do we do this? Is when I realize that fear and anxiety is an enemy. Is an, it's an enemy against me. Like faith is not the absence of reality. No, faith, it's, faith is to recognize my, my world and reality, but it's to add God in the equation. So, so, so faith is you're aware, you're conscious of your world. You, you know that things are rough right now, but you know that God is there. You see the difference? So it's not, to, it's not to close your eyes and to say that it's, it's not real. Yes, it is real. And it's so sad to see that some people are suffering right now. And people, some people are hit hard. And we're called to pray and intercede and stand in the gap for them. 
But faith is to realize this is what is before me, and it's to add God in it. I like this thought. We should finish our phrase with, but God. The economy is blah, 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 but God. Right? My job, but God. My business, but God. My school, but God. My health, but God. we got to finish our phrase with, but God. Because we have God in the equation, right? This is what makes us different from the world. Because we have God in our midst and we got to trust in Him. we got to place ourselves available for Him. We've got to believe that He has something in store, that He wants to reveal Himself, that He wants to speak, that He wants to empower, that He wants to be right in our face in a positive way so that we might shine. And sometimes what's going to happen as you go through this time, it also reveals what's in your heart, Right? So in a time of crisis, what comes up? What comes up? And this is what we see. Um, when we're being shaken, it's like taking a soda pop and you shake it, right? Have you done that? I remember when I was a kid, the RC Cola was the best. We took that RC Cola and we just shook that can. And, and it was so cool just to see it blow, right? Just to see the pop go. And, and so, so the thing is, when you are shaken, when you're shaken, what will come up? Right? In this time, in this shaking, it reveals and exposes what's inside of me. It challenges my foundation. It really does, right? Because your fi- our finances are being shaken, right? Our future becomes unknown. Businesses are not too sure how it's going to pan out. We look at our government when it comes to borrow money, we, we don't know. So how do I respond to this? I've got to turn to God. I got to see God, such a time as this, here I am, I'm available for you. What, what it does, it, it, it balances out what's, what is temporal with what is eternal. Did you know this, that? This, in this time, it makes us think more about eternity. First of all, what is temporal, it's, you, we can lose it overnight, right? We saw some funds dive overnight. We saw that so, it's so fragile. What we see is our world is so fragile. And that's what it says in Proverbs 18, verse 11. It says, the rich think of their wealth as a strong defense. They imagine, they imagine it to be a high wall of security, but it's not. It's really not, right? Because everything can be shaken. But our trust is in the Lord, right? So what happened is that it makes us think about eternity. Because when you look at what is temporal, it's, it's not solid, right? We think it's solid. We get caught in the materialistic world. And it's, it's, just a, it's just a trap where we get caught in, right? And we, when, when we look at this, if we stop and think, I think we can have a glimpse of eternity here. It shows us how things are fragile. And it reminds us of what we're called to live for. And what we're called to live for and what we're called to pursue is what is eternal. And that is found in God as we place ourselves before, before the Lord. So, so if we want to be a fearless church... I need to see fear and anxiety as my enemy, even if you would not be in the se- if we were not be in this season. See fear and anxiety as your enemy, trying to stop you of being what you're called to be. Okay, I think that's a huge component when it comes to a walking fearlessly and to to be the church that we're called to be. My last point here: how can we how can we be fearless as a church? Is when we stay connected. We need each other. A Zambian proverb says, when you run alone, you run fast. When you run together, you run f- for. We're called for interdependence. And it's kind of weird because we were raised to be independent, right? All our life, when you're a kid, you want to be independent on your bike. You want to, depend, you want to leave home, be independent. And, and that's kind of what we want, right? We, we want independence, but what, what we're seeing into this, what we're seeing now for me, what I'm seeing in this season is my need of you guys. I, I can't do this alone. It's, it's kind of weird because we take things for granted, right? We really do. And when we experience this, we, for me, I, I realize my need of each other even more. This is why we worked hard to have Zoom and when it comes to small group and having a flock too where we can have people in community because we can't do, do this alone. 
And, uh, and as we go forward, if we want to be a fearless church that is not caught by fear, I think it's important for us to connect with people that will encourage us and move us in, in, in God's direction. I believe that community is God's answer to despair. It really is. So we can't do this alone. We can't isolate ourselves. We need one another. I like what it says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Let us not neglect meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Like we are in the last days since that time. We're in the, in the last days, and, and, and the author of this book was saying, hey, Jesus is coming soon. And you know the concept of live as though Christ died yesterday? Listen to that. Live like Christ died yesterday, rose today, and coming tomorrow. I remember reading an article many years ago about an apostolic father, and they would say, they asked him this question, so if this would be the end of the world, what would you do? He said, I would continue to do what I'm just doing right now. Because he understood that life could stop tomorrow. So we live as though Christ died yesterday. We remember his love and the cross. We live as though Christ rose today. We are in awe of his power that is found in his his resurrection. But we're also knowing that he's coming back and we live in that way. And that should be a way of life. It shouldn't be a season. It shouldn't be a a highlight as much as as a way of life. So, So when it comes to being... Together, I believe it makes the whole difference. And so we're, invite, we're invited to live as a community. And this is where we can call, we can text, we can Zoom, social media. I invite you to reach, reach out to people. Ask the Lord, go in your devotion and say, God, who do you want me to reach? I invite you to do listening prayer. God, show me someone I'm called to reach. And it's so easy today to do that. Like you, you go on Messenger, you go on Facebook, on Instagram, wherever, there's whatever the platform is. It's easy to connect with people. And uh, I, I was, I, earlier on the, on the week, I, I took the, I, I took, um, I asked Suzanne to give me some names of people to call. And, and um, I called an elder, elderly couple, and, uh, and they were kind of surprised to hear my voice on the phone. And uh, so they talked to me about where they were, and they were saying that they were fine. And they said, they said, well, there's a good thing about all this is a pastor called. <laughs> pastor called. Uh, you know, uh, let, may we use this to even draw closer. May we use this, this, in, this time to even draw closer. Even if we can't be here, we still can minister to one another. And I believe this is how we are able to keep fear at bay, is when we minister, when we encourage one another. And, and, and if there's some people that are th- that are. Th- throwing you under the bus, meaning that they're feeding negative point, negativity, and they're always negative, and they're doomsday people. Just go with people that will feed you the ways of God, where we're called to reach out. Like, uh, maybe, maybe it's because there's nobody here, I, I feel a greater freedom. I don't know if that's good or bad. Well, you know, if you talk about doomsday, you're not willing to make a difference to reach your neighbor, you might as well shut up. Sorry, maybe that's too much. Well, might as well just don't talk because it's about reaching others. It's about making a difference. It's more than just a talk. So may we use this platform or this, this context to reach other people. So why should, I be, why should we be a fearless church? It's because it's our call and mandate. It says in Acts chapter 1, you'll receive power and you'll be my witnesses in Ju- Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the end of the, of the earth. So we want to do that. We want to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And I believe that when we place ourselves to respond to God's call, He's going to empower us. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 4 says, Greater is He that is in me than the one that is in the world. So greater is in me, the one that is in me than the one that is in the world. So, so what we want to see is that we, we want to respond to God's call because that's, our, that's a great commission. And we're empowered to to do that. We can receive the filling of the Holy Spirit. We can receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Why should we be this fearless church? It's because we we live in a world where people need the Prince of Peace. They need the Prince of Peace. And and, and there's so many people that are anxious. I I believe that anxiety is, I, I don't know the stats, I haven't looked at it, but I assume that anxiety is skyrocketing. 
And the thing is, we are the people that brings peace. What did Jesus say when he met his disciples after his resurrection? May the peace be with you. Because they were anxious. So we're carriers of peace. So, so what we're called to do, we're called to go forward and share peace and, and love on people. So a scared world needs a fear, fearless church. Like, we, like, like I said just a moment ago, the season shows that um, things are fragile. Now we need to turn to God. And maybe you're here this, uh, or maybe I'm entering your home right now. You've never given your life to Jesus. Or you, maybe you're with family that are believers, but you're not. Or maybe you've walked away from your faith. Or maybe you're lukewarm. See how this world is fragile. You can't rely on this world. And remember, we're just passing through. This is not home. I invite you to surrender your life to Jesus. I invite you to confess your sins. Acknowledge that you're a sinner. Admit that you need a Savior, that you need direction in your life. Open your heart up to the reality of God. Let Him in. Let Him shine in you. Let Him transform you. And you're going to see it's going to be an awesome journey. And maybe you're, you're watching me right now and you're caught by fear. You're following all kind of a, a conspiracy. Or it grabs your heart. Hey, let God come in. Let God enter your living room and bring peace, knowing that it doesn't really matter. What matters is that you are with him and you're fulfilling your mandate. You're f- fulfilling what he's calling you to do because there's a battle going on. And let me say the battle is over your peace. Can I say this again? Your ba- the battle is over your peace because if I don't have God's peace, I'm not able to hear what he has to say. I need to experience his peace. So I invite you to draw closer to God and let him move you, let him touch you, let him uh, sow life into you. So don't let fear take a grip of your heart. Let the peace, the Prince of Peace enter your life. I think that's huge. Amen. I'd like to lead you in a prayer at this point here. I won't ask you to stand, but I invite you just to, um, just to open up to God. Like I said in my invitation, maybe you've Never committed your life to Jesus Christ fully. You might be a junior youth or a young adult, and you've grown in the church, but you've never surrendered your life to Jesus fully. Hey, guys, this life is fragile, as we can see. Turn to God. He is a sure foundation. He is a rock of ages. Build your life on him. It's going to make the whole difference. You'll have an inner peace that the world can't give. It's going to rock you inside. I invite you to do that. I invite you to ask the Lord just to come and visit you. Maybe you're caught with fear. You're feeding that fear. Ask the Lord to help you to stop to feed that fear. Ask the Lord to free you from the inside that you would have in your words, but God. Okay, this is happening, but God has a plan. God has a way. That you would let joy arise in your heart. That you would see that God is on the move. That God is is up to something. That you would place yourself available for him. That you would not let fear bring you down or prevent you from stepping up. But that you would say, God, I believe in you. I don't have to be controlled by fear because you're with me. So God, here I am. Fill my life. Fill my home with a hope. Fill my home with with an expectation that you are there and that you want to show up, that you want to glorify yourself in this context. So we turn to you, God, and we give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite Brenton to come forward. He's going to give, I have some homeworks for you to do, so he's going to share the homework. Right on. So the kids are like a week without homework. Spring break. We've got some homework. It's, it's going to be good homework though. So I'm just going to read through these and at the end actually uh, we're going to worship and then there's going to be a slide with all of them on there. So you'll maybe want to screenshot the TV when that slide plays. And you can also look at the sermon notes to read these. So number one, uh, what fear or fears are you facing right now? And what steps can you take to begin to convert your fear to faith? So again, when we're doing this, these are things we're asking God. Go before God and ask him these questions. Uh, Number two, in difficult times, we're called to reach out to each other, giving us hope, 
giving each other hope and providing support. So what's one way you can offer practical help to someone else this week? What an awesome question, right? We, we want to be people that are carrying hope to our world. Three, we encourage you to stay socially connected during this time without uh, connecting physically. How do you plan to keep gathering together? So not that we're gathering together, but how do you plan to do that? Uh, again, like we mentioned, uh, we're going to be starting life groups online. If you go to gmchurch.ca right now and click the life groups tab, then you can sign up for an online life group if you're not yet in a life group. Uh, we, we need community now more than ever. So how are you going to do that? Um, number four, what are you feeding your spirit? Can you make any adjustments to strengthen your spirit during this time? What are you filling yourself with? Are you filling yourself with just the news or with God's word as well? Um, and five, in listening prayer, ask God to show you what he wants to do in you during these times. God has a purpose for every season in our life. And if we allow him to work, then he wants to do something in us good during this time. Amen. Can we uh, close in worship together? The sound of worship so great and glorious. Holy Spirit, hear us now. Breathe on us, holy fire fall. Come and fill this place with your presence. Like a rushing wind, send your spirit here. Breath of heaven, breathe. May God breathe on us. May he fill us. And I encourage you, like Claude was saying, may this week we grab that, that mask of God's presence 
uh, and, and just let him fill us. Let, let him uh, overflow in us so that we can bring his presence to this world. Awesome. So I believe your homework's going to come up right now, so you can bring that up. See you guys, and have a great week.